One of the most difficult aspects of translating a large project over a period of time is trying to use terminology in a way that consistently matches the source material. Generally, as long as the intended meaning comes across, inconsistency isn't that big an issue, but in a game like Elden Ring where every word carries weight, very minor differences can have large impacts on interpreting its lore. In this episode of Fear the Old Lore, we'll take a closer look at Estelle Natural Born of the Void, Glintstone Sorceries, and the Primeval Current, comparing the English and Japanese for more insight into their lore. I'd like to give a special thank you to all my patrons and channel members, as your support helps make it possible for me to continue working on these kinds of videos. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you enjoy talking lore, feel free to join the Discord server. The link is in the video description. Let's begin. I'm not sure why exactly Estelle is called the Natural Born of the Void, since this Japanese name is closer to Bastard or Spawn of Darkness, which is reflected in the way Estelle's flail is called the Bastard Stars. It's unfortunate the localizers chose things this way since it may have inadvertently erased some of Estelle's connection to darkness by focusing on the Void. Fortunately, the version of Estelle we can find in the Yellow Annex Tunnel, Stars of Darkness, preserves some of Estelle's ties to the dark. The reason this is relevant is because of how Estelle ties into the spell Eternal Darkness, which says it's a lost sorcery of the Eternal City, the despair that brought about its ruin made manifest. I know there's a little bit of confusion surrounding this spell, in that some read it as though Eternal Darkness was manifested out of despair after the Eternal Cities were destroyed, but the Japanese for it is a little clearer in that despair in the form of Eternal Darkness is what brought destruction to the Eternal City. At first, this sounds at odds with the meteorite of Estelle and the remembrance of the Natural Born, which say that Estelle leveled the Eternal City and took away their sky. However, once it's put into context that Estelle was born from darkness instead of the lightless void, then it becomes easier to tie Estelle to eternal darkness. One issue with this interpretation is that it may require a recontextualization of what's understood about the Nox. It's often thought that Estelle may have been sent by the Greater Will to steal the night skies away from the Nox, but this doesn't have to be the case. According to the Japanese dialogue for the Finger Reader Crone at the East Ryolukarian Gate, the Ryolukarian Glintstone Eventide is a form of night created through Glintstone. If Glintstone can artificially produce the night sky all on its own, it most likely coincides with the way the Nox live under a false night sky in the Eternal Cities. Thus, when Estelle attacked, it didn't need to steal the true night sky away from the Nox, just the false one underground, and the Nox could have already been banished by the Greater Will long before it happened. Of the Eternal Cities, the Nameless One in Deep Root Depths is the only one to lack the false night sky found in Nakron and Noxtella, making it the most likely target Estelle struck. Additionally, compared to the other cities, the Nameless Eternal Cities buildings are more clearly destroyed. It's unclear why Estelle is found beyond the Lake of Rot instead of Deep Root Depths though, so there may still be more to the story we don't know. One aspect of Estelle's lore that tripped me up for quite a while was trying to reconcile the idea that Estelle was a shooting star that fell from the sky and happened to wind up in the Lake of Rot and Yellow Annex Tunnel. If Estelle came from the sky, I would have expected more visible impact craters, however, things started to make more sense to me once I realized meteors don't necessarily have to come from the sky in Elden Ring. According to spells like Founding Rain of Stars, the stars can be summoned directly into the lands between, and meteors fall readily from spells like meteorites. With this in mind, it's entirely possible that the Nox were already banished underground by the Greater Will, and their despair manifested itself into eternal darkness, allowing Estelle to enter the lands between and level the eternal cities. This doesn't help explain the presence of the Estelle in the Yellow Annex Tunnel though. I've wondered whether the existence of Estelle and the Falling Star Beasts are tied to meteorites that can be found near them, like in Celia Crystal Tunnel, Altus Plateau, Mount Gelmir in the Yellow Annex Tunnel, but since the Estelle in the Lake of Ra and the Malformed Stars in the Ul Palace Ruins, Einzel River, and Perfumer's Grotto don't have any signs of meteorites nearby, it's a bit more difficult trying to make that claim. This is pretty heavy speculation, 
but with Glintstone's ability to create a false night sky and harbor souls within it like in Sullen's primal Glintstone, there may be a chance they can create a direct channel into the primeval current and allow the souls of the cosmos into the lands between. Our art draws upon the powers embedded in Glintstone. But what is the nature of such power? Glintstone is the amber of the cosmos. Golden amber contains the remnants of ancient life and houses its vitality, while Glintstone contains residual life and thus the vitality of the stars. It should not be forgotten that Glintstone's sorcery is the study of the stars and the life therein. With Graven School Talisman saying they're created from masses of sorcerers who are grafted together to become the seeds of stars, the stars may be amalgamations of souls themselves. Depending on how literally we should take the idea that Glintstone is the amber of the cosmos, it could mean that Glintstone comes from the sap of the Erd Tree. With the souls of the dead returning to the Erd Tree through Erd Tree burials, and the Erd Tree governing the order of the world, it might be possible the Erd Tree can influence the stars, but there's reason to doubt this. Multiple item descriptions mention a time before the Erd Tree, and the founding reign of Star Sorcery says it's thought to be the founding Glintstone Sorcery. The glimpse of the primeval current that the astrologer saw became real, and the star's amber rained down on this land. Compared to starlight shards which glow blue, amber starlight shines with gold and may coincide with the way Elden Stars says, it is said that long ago, the Greater Will sent a golden star bearing a beast into the lands between, which would later become the Elden Ring. It's possible to take Founding Reign of Stars to mean it was what led to the Elden Ring and Elden Beast entering the lands between, especially since the telescope says, the fate once written in the night skies had been fettered by the Golden Order, meaning the star's fate wasn't always guided by the Elden Ring. However, both Amber Starlight and Elden Star's description are written as hearsay, so they can't be taken blindly as facts. Oddly enough, this kind of leads into a chicken versus egg situation. Which came first, the Amber of the Stars or the Amber of the Erd Tree? With Founding Reign of Stars saying it's considered the founding Glintstone sorcery, it may have been what led to the creation of Glintstone through the Elden Ring and the Erd Tree. While I really like Primeval Current as a localization choice, one aspect of it that gets a little lost in translation is that it has connotations of being the origin or source of something, rather than just being incredibly ancient or primitive. Of course, it's unclear what the primeval current is the source or origin of, but it wouldn't be a surprise if it was related to life or the outer gods. Sullen's primal glintstone and the primal glintstone blade make it clear one's soul can be transmuted into glintstone, and the crystallions that cleave close to the ideals of the primeval current are alive yet inorganic. If the light forms created through the primeval current are inorganic, it may explain why Estelle and the Falling Star Beasts are presented as having skeletal faces, or why its knowledge seems beyond human ken. Those who do come into contact with the primeval current often end up going mad under the crushing weight of its knowledge. When Azur glimpsed into the primeval current, he saw darkness. The same darkness Estelle spawned from. Azur was left both bewitched and fearful of the abyss, and both his and Lusat's crowns replaced their brains and skulls, transforming them into near and organic beings. Just like Azur, when Lusat glimpsed into the primeval current, he beheld the final moments of a great star cluster, and upon seeing it, he too was broken. While he may not have beheld the same darkness as Azur, Lusat's skull was transformed into something resembling the Eye of Estelle. The only sorcerer who touched the primeval current but didn't seem to lose their mind completely is the errant sorcerer Wilhelm. Wilhelm in particular is fascinating to me because his guidance of grace caused him to be confronted by the raging wolf Vargrim, who is cosplaying as an Empyrean Shadowhound beast. Of course, Vargrim may not have been acting at the behest of the two fingers, but the possibility that Wilhelm's guidance of grace would lead him down a path which opposed the round table hold or one that led him to the primeval current could imply that everyone's guidance of grace is different, or that not all paths lead to the Elden Ring. And with Vargrim wielding the Godslayer's greatsword, the weapon of the Glomide Queen, an Empyrean chosen by the Two Fingers, it's really easy for speculation to run wild. By and large, 
The primeval currents and celestial magic are associated with an inner or inorganic form of life, and attempts to harness its power resulted in the creation of things akin to puppets and golems. Since Sullivan uses starlight shards and his potions to create puppets, and the starlight shards description says they were used in the intoxicating drafts of the Eternal City, we can infer the Nox may have been the most knowledgeable about its application. With their swordstresses and night maidens being willing participants to become puppets, they may have experimented with trying to let alien lifeforms enter their bodies. Or they may have tried to attain immortality through body swapping, perhaps with silver mimic tears, similar to the way Selen utilizes her primal glintstone since mimics are said to lack the will of the original. What we can learn about the production of puppets is that the blue life within the stars seems to be able to override consciousness. Amber starlight, on the other hand, seems to be a mystery. If I were to guess and make an analogy, it may be that blue starlight provides form and amber starlight provides substance. In other words, the stars and primal glintstones may be vessels for life, and amber might be akin to the soul that can fill such a vessel. If this is true, it may help contextualize how graven school masses can become the seeds of stars, or why a malformed star might lead to the creation of a stellar or a falling star beast. After the founding reign of stars, amber starlight fell to the land, could the Nox have taken it and put it into a vessel of their own? Would that be how America came to possess the Elden Ring? There is nothing to say for sure, but I do like toying with the idea that Radigan could have been an external manifestation of the greater will that could have taken over America's body, perhaps in a way that's similar to how the Silver Tear Simi would confront the player in its cut questline. But it might not fit into the final version of the game, since the Nox seemingly failed to artificially create their own Elden Lord. For what it's worth, there are a few surprising similarities between Estelle and the Elden Beast, and that they both use nebulas in their attacks but not quite enough for me to say there's a definitive connection. Aside from that though, there may also be some conflicts in the timeline with when the Nox would have created mimics and puppets, particularly since it would have presumably happened after the age of the Erdtree had already begun. Nonetheless, with founding reign of stars bringing the star's amber to the lands between, and the possibility that the amber was the Elden Ring, Elden Beast, or Elden Stars, there may be more of a connection to the primeval current and the Elden Beast after all. This may have also been what angered the Greater Will if it never intended for the Elden Ring to be sent into the Lands Between, so there's plenty of room left open for interpretation. If the Nox being banished underground is what led to their despair, and their despair is made manifest through eternal darkness, inadvertently summoning Estelle, the spawn of darkness, it makes me wonder if despair, or strong emotions in general, can be far-reaching and have disastrous effects. The nomadic merchants who were buried under Lane Dell summoned the frenzied flame by chanting a curse of despair. I don't know if this means the nomadic merchants also summoned the Three Fingers, or if they're just summoning the power of its flames through some connection they've made. The connection to the Blood Star may have happened the same way since it was said to be discovered through Eternal Darkness, but unfortunately, it does use a different set of kanji than what's used in the Eternal Darkness sorcery. They have very similar meanings though, but there's no way of telling if they're meant to be the same, kind of like with Ronnie's Dark Moon and the Black Moon of Noxtella. Nonetheless, being able to discover something like an entire star after having one's eyes gouged out and going blind is the kind of storytelling I really enjoy, and it reminds me of the way something like the Cosmos and Bloodborne is metaphysically omnipresent, and I hope more is expanded upon the concept in future updates or DLC. I realize much of what I shared can also be inferred from the text, but with there already being so many red herrings throughout Elden Ring, I hope these revelations can help advance future discussions about the game. Thanks for watching, and remember, fear the old lore.